Yeah, welcome, Loren. Yes, we have quite a story to tell today. <laughs> yeah. Now, now the the uh, title of of today's um, interview is U.S. Space Shuttle Covert Mission was chemtrails in space for HARP, i.e. the covert mission of the U.S. Space Shuttle was to spray chemtrails in space for the outer space uses of HARP. And we'll go in later in depth into the science behind it, but that's an extraordinary scientific conclusion. Can you just in one or two or three sentences uh, describe to us how you came to that scientific conclusion? Well, I always wondered what the real mission of the space shuttle was, and I could never figure out what they were really doing up there. I interviewed three or four um, astronauts, and I, they were all working in intelligence. So um, I have been working for a very long time, for seven years for this link, and I happened to be at a uh, website above top secret which had a 56 page website with images of heart facilities physical facilities taken from space all over the world and very little text but there was one piece of text that I read and I knew I had the answer to my question. And it was uh, a U.S. Navy press release for Dr. Paul Bernhardt, a Naval Research Lab scientist who had been elected to the IEEE, the International um, Electronics Engineers uh, Association. And uh, this was, this is on uh, the U.S. Navy uh, official website, so no one can challenge this. But um, even more uh, puzzling was why they abruptly shut down that very expensive space shuttle camp. Um, and so this press release by the U.S. Navy, just describing what he'd done, is all of the, uh, the hard press. So... That's, that's how I covered it, and it was just a few days ago. So everyone hear this for the first time. You are the first ones to hear it, because we just figured it out. Well, you know, um, this is kind of, as they say in uh, the, the legislatures, I'd like to take a point of personal privilege. Because uh, what the discovery that you have made which is that the uh, covert mission of the U.S. Space Shuttle program was actually to spray chemtrails in space for HARP. Uh, your discovery uh, actually has uh, put in perspective for me the last uh, 10 years of my professional activity uh, around a piece of legislation uh, that I and, and a treaty that I actually drafted here in Vancouver, Canada in 2001 and that was introduced um, into the US Congress in October of 2001 with the bill number HR 2977 and it was called the Space Preservation Act and I, I'm just going to uh, uh, read from it here very briefly the text of 2977. We'll include this text in the, in the article. It says, uh, banning such uh, exotic weapon system, this is banning them in space, electronic, psychotronic, or information weapons, one, electronic, psychotronic, or information weapons to chemtrails. This is chemtrails in space. I drafted this based on my own research back in the summer and fall of 2001. Uh, this was prior to 
and we forwarded to Kucinich, and he introduced it after 9-11. This is Representative Dennis Kucinich. He, he introduced it in, in October of 2001. Two, chemtrails. Three, high-altitude, ultra-low frequency weapon system. That's HARP. Four, plasma ele electromagnetic sonic or ultrasonic weapons. And five, laser weapon system. Now, we know now that in the 9-11 uh, catastrophe or false flag operation, the uh, molecular dissociation of the World Trade Center, the Twin Towers, was done by space-based weapons. Uh, namely, what was prohibited under three high-altitude, ultra-low frequency weapon systems, or under four plasma, electromagnetic, sonic, or ultrasonic weapons, or five laser weapon systems. The reason why we think it was three, that is what the bill, my, the bill I wrote prohibited, uh, namely high altitude, ultra low frequency weapon systems, was that you have chemtrails in here. So that uh, the fact that they were spraying chemtrails in space meanings, means that they were using HARP in space and uh, could very well have used it in the 9-11. Uh, let, let, let me just read... Uh, something that confirms that directly from sure. the news release. Okay. Sure. This is from the that Navy press release from 2006. Dr. Bernhardt, quote, Dr. Bernhardt used, um, Dr. Bernhardt has conducted for eight experiments from 1985 to the present, which was 2006, using the Space Shuttle Orbital Maneuver Subsystem Engines to modify the ionosphere with high-speed exhaust injections into the upper atmosphere. The results of these dedicated engine burns have been recorded using the VHF and UHF at Arecibo, Puerto Rico, Kwajalein, Marshall Islands, Millstone Hill, Massachusetts, and Hicamarca, Peru. Currently, Dr. Bernhardt is the principal investigator for the Charged Aerosol Release Experiment, CARE, C-A-R, program, designed to study the scattering of radon, radon from electrons vicinity of charged plates that form artificial dusty plasmas. So there you have it, confirmation by the name that you were absolutely correct. Yeah, and I was absolutely correct just prior to 9-11. We forwarded that bill to Kucinich, Re Representative Kucinich, to introduce 2977, H.R. 2977, uh, we forwarded to him prior to September 11th, 2001, and Kucinich went and introduced it in early October of 2001. In fact, he couldn't even use his office be because his offices were off limits because of all the anthrax uh, that had been mailed to the uh, U.S. Congress at that time. So he introduced the bill which banned chemtrails and harp in space which they had just used which they had just used uh the u.s uh you know uh some uh black project within the u.s military had just used involving many many agencies we know from the research around 9-11 now, they had just used HARP and chemtrails in space to, uh, uh, to uh, make the Twin Towers into uh, molecular dust. So, uh, let me ask you this. Let's go on with the science of the space shuttle hidden agenda.
in other words, chemtrails in the high atmosphere and in space. And then let's come back to the politics, because there are even uh, public articles written now saying that I was totally wrong and that and Representative Kuczynich has had a very shady role in all of this. And I think that this has to be exposed because Representative Kucinich is now trying to carpetbag himself into a congressional seat uh, and the Democratic nomination for a new congressional district in Olympia, Washington. So let, let me go back to the science and we'll get to the politics afterward. Um, okay. Tell us about the space shuttle's hidden agenda and that is chemtrails okay. in space. First of all, in that Navy press release, it, it gave a lot of information about Dr. Paul Bernhardt. And these press releases and a special uh, um, uh, awards newsletters and things like that are, are how institutions and scientists like to blow their own horn and try to get more funding for what they're doing by talking about how great they are, what great discoveries they've made. So I discovered from this press release that Dr. Paul A. Bernhard uh, uh, had been affiliated for his higher education with the University of California at Santa Barbara and Stanford University where he got his bachelor's, master's degree. He's also a fellow of IEEE and IEEE, the International Electronics and Electrical Engineers Organization. It's huge and it's global. And they very, very, very involved with the development of HARP. And they actually published a journal with a lot of the research papers on the development of HARP and control and the HARP applications. So it is available. He's also a member of the American Physical Union, AGU, which was essential uh, and is a partner with IEEE developing HARP, providing a scientific forum for the science to exchange their ideas research. This is HARP basically the biggest big science project that's ever been conducted. The Manhattan Project, I would say, is when big science started. This is the um, certainly the the uh, intricate, well-funded, complex, and global um, uh, project uh, to develop a weapon of mass destruction that, that has ever been undertaken. Now, uh, Dr. Bernhardt also worked for the U.S. Navy uh, and the Los Alamos Weapons Lab, and then he went to the Naval Research of RNL, and he's, he was also working at the facility. So all these are intimately involved in co-development of HARP secretly with the Soviet Union and now with post-Soviet Russia. And in the U.S. Navy a press release, I'd like to quote, Dr. Bernhardt used the power HF facility near Arecibo, Rico, and near Novgorod in Russia from 1995 to 1999, that's 15 years almost, to observe mid-latitude artificial plasmas that illuminated natural irregularities in the ionosphere. So this is tied to Russia on top of all the other institutions involved with the, de the development of HARP. And most people don't know that UC Berkeley, Stanford University, we know probably UC Santa Barbara, and Livermore Lake. I know UCLA was involved in the mind control um, application. So, um, California and Russia are really where HARP uh, was born. So, um, this, this um, boy, this press release, really exposed a lot, all of it, the um, 
the development, the use of space shuttle to inject the aerosols into the ionosphere, and then the uh, the different uh, radar uh, facilities they used, and the the type of radar uh, to create these plasmas. And they were observing natural plasmas and artificially created plasmas. So um, I think that's pretty much the best verification we could ever get is from the U.S. Navy themselves uh, that the whole space program is U.S. Navy. The Internet is all U.S. Navy. Google, Facebook, um, Microsoft, it's all U.S. Navy. And the backbone of the... Uh, Internet was developed at Livera Lab, which is one of two premier nuclear weapons labs in the U.S. So good job, Alfred. You were very right. You did very good research and very nice to be able to be the one to vindicate uh, what you discovered 11 years ago. Okay. Well, well, uh, it, it, it's not so much the vindication. Uh, uh, it's that if that bill had gone through, we would not have had the the China earthquake. We we would not have had the Myanmar cyclone, in which 150,000 people were killed. We would not have had the 2008 China earthquake with 80,000 people killed. We would have not had the 2010 Haiti earthquake with 200,000 people killed. And we would not have had the March 11th, 2011, Fukushima HARP, nuclear false flag, global radiation event, in which 100,000 people in the United States alone have been killed or will be killed by the end of 2011 from the radiation alone, with probably more in the coming years. So, uh, before we go into the political analysis, I, I, w I want to make sure that you've covered all of the science and that you feel that you've communicated to our audience why it is that you feel that the covert mission of the U.S. Space Shuttle, which now has suddenly been discontinued, was really to spray chemtrails in space. I'd like to go back to the late 1800s when uh, the early pioneers, uh, such as Tesla and uh, Foley and other people that were experimenting, oh, uh, Edison, um, uh, Westinghouse, all these people were experimenting and uh, discovering new things about um, energy and matter. And I guess that we would Tesla technology now. But even then, they were describing molecular dissociation by using energetic waves. And so that is definitely one of the applications of, of HARP. Uh, they also described creating vortexes, weather modification. I mean, they had this idea over 100 years ago. And... Uh, not Tesla described, but he did cause earthquakes using waveforms. In fact, he had one in the thing where his laboratory was, and it started shaking other buildings, and it was only the size of uh, maybe a telephone. And um, he uh, suddenly realized he was going to shake his thing apart. It would collapse around him. So he got a hammer out and smashed the uh, the transmitter before it could destroy the building he was in and kill him, and the police came and and um, he destroyed it already. But <laughs> being a scientist is sometimes a dangerous business. So um, all of these technologies basically were discovered and described over a hundred years ago, but it century to develop them. And uh, these are the HARP applications. They even uh, talked about uh, mind control and mind... Tesla talked about that. 
over a hundred years ago. So they really did understand the electromagnetic realm, and we're only just beginning to understand it. They couldn't have, um, it was really the international financier bankers who wanted to get control of it and to use it to benefit themselves. Otherwise, it would have been, it would have been uh, um, already in use at the, the 20th century, but the bankers permitted it. In fact, Tesla went to see J.P. Morgan, and, um, J and, and J.P. Morgan wanted to buy his patent, and uh, Tesla refused to sell it to him. And uh, so when, when Tesla arrived back at his lab, it was burned to the ground right? within half an hour meeting with J.P. Morgan. Right. Now... Why is it, as a scientist who has been ex studying the weapons applications of HARP, do you believe that they would want chemtrails in space? I mean, what is the function of those chemtrails? Oh, well, the ionosphere is very, very far from the surface of the Earth. And uh, people, I mean, just basically didn't know anything about, about the, the atmosphere. Uh, and they could fly and put satellites up and send the space shuttle up and, and the nuclear bomb tests were a way to study the, the ionosphere. What they were really studying was the behavior of the Earth's magnetic field. And uh, the Van Allen belts are uh, the charge line of between, between from pole to pole of the Earth's magnetic field, which is inside the Earth uh, at, in the core and inner core. There's a solid core, inner core and an outer core. They rotate at different speeds and, um, and they uh, or generate an electrical field. And that's why we have uh, a magnetic field and also gravity on Earth and also why plate tectonics. It's because we have a hot area of the Earth. Um, they basically um, basically wanted to utilize the the electromagnetic realm, and the only way they could do that was to study the the ionosphere and the behavior of the Van Allen And um, so there was a, a just at Livermore Lab, fifties and sixties, named Christopolis, and Dr. Christopolis proposed the uh, nuclear weapons atmosphere testing program a way to inject highly large particles into the Van Allen belt and study their behavior, observe them from satellites or other. And uh, so that happened in 1963. Um, the uh, three great superpowers who had big nuclear weapons programs, Britain, Russia, and the U.S., signed the treaty partial test ban treaty, which ended up with spheric testing, then so had to find another way to inject particles to uh, upper space, and that was uh, basically the space shuttle. So the space shuttle filled in, or was a way to be, uh, inject different kinds of uh, particles into the high atmosphere, the ionosphere. And it's quite obvious that it takes 20 or 30 years to develop a program like this. So um, they probably started to develop a space shuttle program under JFK with space rays. And the space rays with deception to pull the public into thinking this was, uh, the space exploration was for, to make us a scientist, scientist and first in space and still things like that in order to get the public to support what was actually a covert weapons of mass destruction project to control and destroy humanity. And HARP today is being used by countries to get their very own system with horrific natural events that are uh, artificially triggered with HARP and bring about famine, grabs, uh, crop failures, weather warfare, uh, 
all these things uh, in the natural world have provided and supported life on this planet, using them and manipulating them to destroy life on the planet. Right, right. Now, um, I just want to mention that during your entire presentation there, your image went in and out of focus and into extreme out of focus. So we're going to put a notification throughout this entire program at the bottom uh, so that viewers know that, that uh, and they can actually see your image shifting in and out of focus now. And that, that has nothing to do with your equipment or our equipment. That is external interference, most probably by a military intelligence agency, perhaps the NSA, or a police agency, or a contractee, contractor thereof, uh, that is doing that. Now, do you feel that there's enough background now, uh, uh, we're about 25 minutes in, in, into the segment, and this segment is going to deal entirely with this issue of the covert mission of the um, U.S. space shuttle being chemtrails for use by HARP. That's going to be the, the sole topic here. Uh, do you do you, do you feel that you've you've set out a sufficient scientific basis uh, so that now we should shift to the politics of the situation, such as well, both I, you and I experienced it over the past ten years? Yes, yes. But I would just like to take a bit more, uh, just to get a little more information, and that is that. Uh, discovered a seismologist and geologist named Shimamura Ki. And he's the former director of the National Institute of Polar Research in Japan. Uh, he's got to be one of the leading directors of employment by Japan. Just to um, illustrate uh, the intensity of the HARP demonstrations or experiments after 1965, I'd like to mention or point out that Japan had 14 large magnitude earthquakes of 6.0 magnitude and greater between 1891 and the end of 1988. That's 77 years. But, Alfred, between 1995 and 2011, there were 32 major earthquakes 16 in a period of six years. That's a 1,007% increase. Uh, Indonesia, which is also targeted for mining by these international financiers, has a similar large increase, and I would that the heart mining products intended in Southeast Asia and Australia are, um, are London financiers... Uh, plans to sell huge amounts of minerals and metals that they mine to China as they pump it up and they dump the Western economy and dry the United States and Japan. So um, that, that name led me to many things. Um, I'd like to mention um, the Demeter satellite from, uh, which was launched by the French in 2004. And this to show, as, met, as well as a lot of other free evidence, that this is an international consortium conspiring to create HARP and uh, secretly use it against citizens and regions and, uh, uh, and also Mother Nature. So, a paper, a uh, very interesting uh, paper, uh, was um, produced by two scientists. Uh, their names are Haya Hobara in 2010. Uh, the name of it is Current Status of Seismomagnetics for Short-Term Earthquake Production. It's in a new journal in England, this is the British print again, called Natural Hazards and Risk. 
And this is really hilarious. The, the scientific paper, this is peer-reviewed, 42 pages long, describes modern earthquakes different from other earthquakes. These modern earthquakes um, with transmitted UL frequency have detected up the, this frequency can be detected up to 12 days before the quake. And then there's a, and of course they are artificially transmitted from heart facilities. Then the 12 days of heating is followed by a quiet period three days before the quick uh, pops or happens when a 2.5 hertz frequency has been detected and also um, the trace of it, the evidence is on the, uh, the magnetometer, magnetometers at heart facilities showing which uh, magnetometer in which uh, heart facility that signal which causes the was actually transmitted from. And then the paper describes a third phase of these multi earthquakes, and that's the F period, which has uh, multiple aftershocks and other phenomena. So this field is emergent seismology. It is exactly uh, coincides with the exponential escalation of large magnitude earthquakes globally since about 1965. And uh, I would like to also mention the International Geophysical Year, IGY, and in the 1950s, and that was a signal for new research and funding in geoscience, which became the basic research necessary for HARP applications. And there are 12 patents, by the way, which ARCA owned, uh, oil company. The American uh, Geophysical Union, AGU, that I mentioned earlier, was revamped, well-funded in the early 1950s as well, to provide the science forum for developmental, development of, under the cover, always they've got a cover story of research for pure science. But you don't get Money, lots of money in pure science to do research and it's got a military or a financial uh, 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 fit to it. Now, um, in 2004, the French launched a satellite, a special satellite called Demeter, which was up to monitor these modern earthquakes or harbor earthquakes. And uh, this new field called seismoelectromagnetics or is trying to prove their hypothesis is that there is a lithosphere at this on a coupling so that the uh, the lithosphere or uh, the, the uh, crust and, and the place of the earth are connected some way to the atmosphere and to the ionosphere which is much higher and so they think now that with this new field they can actually learn to predict earthquakes, which is hilarious since they're actually triggering them. Um, the new, the new, new um, uh, satellite that was launched is named Demeter, and it is dedicated simply to monitoring the ULF signature on earthquakes. Now, Demeter is a Greek goddess, the harvest, grains, fertility of the earth, and the season. And Demeter is also the goddess of poppies. We know very well the economy, the real economy of the world is hidden. It's five times greater than the global economy that we know uh, is based on uh, dope. It's uh, a heroin and drugs. And it's by an international network uh, that goes all the way back to the crusade called Dope Incorporated. So this uh, paper also gave an inventory of modern earthquakes post-1965 with the ULF anomaly, and that would be the Kobe earthquake. In other words, Japan triggered it itself. The TAC earthquake in Armenia is probably Russia. 
Sigma Prieta in the U.S., probably U.S., and three in Japan called Izu, Kagoshima, and Wate that were probably related to uh, setting up the great Tohoku earthquake that destroyed the Fukushima uh, power plant. And there were other contemporaneous earthquakes of the ULS anomaly in this, identified in this paper, and that would be the Northridge U.S. earthquake, the Okushiri and earthquakes in Japan. So, one can only conclude from data presented in this paper, Alfred, countries are triggering harp earthquakes causing enormous environmental disasters use against their own citizens. It's just absolutely so obvious. And the uh, discovery that the space shuttle, uh, the real mission was to um, trail in the ionosphere, uh, is another piece of forensic evidence that, that proves this is a, another WMD project, the greatest weapon of mass destruction ever developed in the world. Right, and and we're we're going to continue now uh, with with all of the science, but at the end we're going to show that this could only go forward in a democracy with the connivance of even members of Congress to covertly defeat legislation that was aimed at banning this, making it public, and stopping this. Uh, so I thought, yeah, Go yeah, ahead. no, no. I mean that that's that and and that piece of legislation, which was introduced into the U.S. Congress in October of 2001, was HR 2977, the Space Preservation Act, one of whose salient provisions was to ban the use of chemtrails in space and to ban the use of HARP, including its space-based components. And only through the connivance of U legislators like U.S. Congressman Dennis Kucinich, who basically threw this bill under the bus, uh, have we had the last decade of catastrophes uh, uh, from HARP not the least of which is Fukushima, which is a global radiation and depopulation event. Okay, uh, let's, let's get to that again at the end of the program, but let's continue with uh, the person you call Daddy Harp. Okay, a uh, Japan Daddy Harp. Is Shimamura Hideki, as I mentioned, the former director of the National Institute of Polar Research. And the Russians have been doing polar research since 1898. They sent a ship to the Arctic in 1898. That was the first scientific expedition. In 1930, they had established permanent uh, manned, all the year round, uh, scientific observatories or scientific stations collecting data in the Arctic, and they were put on ice flows at the Pacific end of the Arctic Ocean where the ice caps off the continent. And they were big enough to land planes because uh, supplies and so forth be uh, flown in to sustain the 12-month uh, uh, um, operation. And so um, the uh, U.S. didn't have ice stations until about 1955. Then they were they were collaborating and cooperating with the Soviets because they had to co-develop it, um, tend enemies anyway. So um, by searching Hideki's name, I with a cornucopia, uh, an immense discovery of new evidence on heart development. And uh, it came from programs for global conferences he'd attended, site newsletters, uh, 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 extensive lists of scientists and their papers, and the Japanese are very, very prominent. They are one of the major global players in the development of HARP. 
but it's because they're so technologically advanced. Uh, the the heart site newsletters were very interesting, and uh, the list of scientists' funding sources, great cooperation by the international com community. For instance, Japan not only has heart facilities in Japan, but they have magnetometer in Alaska at Gakona. They're a partner in the Tromso Norway Heart Facility, and they have been building heart stations all over Indonesia, and then training the Indonesians in Japan on how to run them. So um, it's pretty obvious that it's like a whole hidden economy, like Dope Incorporated. It's just huge, and involves a, a tremendous amount of scientists and institutions. Um, it's a it's a fourth dimensional rich body of evidence as to who, what. Oh, Dope for, for Corporation as to who, what, how, why, and where uh, is, is uh, all in heart. So uh, one of the very interesting discoveries I made is from searching his name is the, the Nikon Camera Corporation website. They have an extensive uh, web presentation called Development of observation technology, reading the wind in the Antarctic, the story of light and people. And what they have presented is the newest, very major Japanese heart facility in the Antarctic. It's one of three that are exactly a thousand miles apart from each other in a triangle, and they must be around the, uh, the center of the uh, of the magnetic field in the South Pole. And, uh, of course, I discovered that it's really financiers, international financiers, who not only fund, but they control the direction of large, large science to benefit themselves. The Nikon self uh, presents this research science at Pansy, that's the name of the Antarctic site, uh, it says it's being used to carry out an innocent, uh, uh, it's an innocent blanket, cover blanket of wonder about discovering aurora, gravity waves, oscillating clouds, Antarctic winds, but it's really to cover the sinister applications and uh, agendas that always emerge later and then were caught in their trap. Uh, also, Harp Satellite, D Demeter, the wondrous new Japanese harp research station is named Pan for a lovely flower. That's how I describe it. And that reveals the real agenda in the name. Pansy is from the, the French Pensee, which means to think or thought. But with the Zionist fascist university, Kyoto University and Tokyo University being the main in development plans, and Pansy just went operational a few months ago. The hidden agenda will soon emerge. Pansy and these other two, uh, Antarctic Heart Antenna Arrays, uh, are probably going to function as a global mind control program. And you, you mentioned that they're arranged in a triangle. Yes, exactly a thousand miles from each other. Right. And listen to what Nikon says. This is the corporate sales pitch. Um, in the pursuit of science, man has long contemplated various phenomena. The Tohoku earthquake of March 2011 appears to have significantly undermined confidence in in some branches of science. That means predicting earthquakes. The reality is, however, that Japan continues to lead the world in terms of scientific and technological capability. The Pansy Project, Program of the Antarctic Siyowa MSTIS radar, is now commenced. This is a large-scale scientific project led by Japan to observe the Antarctic winds. Human beings 
will continue to comprehend, contemplate and comprehend a new reality. Japan will continue to tread this path. And HARP is not a benign and happy event for humanity. I can assure that. So that's what I have to say about the science. Right. Now, um, uh, <clears throat> in a sense, uh, politicians uh, of the variety that are exist now in in the U.S. Congress, for example, that could have regulated HARP and that had in H.R. 2977, the Space Preservation Act, before it was eviscerated uh, uh, to become sort of a meaningless piece of what I would call legislative flypaper. Uh, politicians and especially uh, the U.S. executive, we know that President Barack Obama is a creation of the Rockefeller Rothschild banking system. Now, what have you found out about integrated systems, that is, bankers, corporations, and science, which have led the bankers and corporation to create a perversion of science, which is the chemtrails, harp, planet killer? Well, uh, basically, the ruling elite uh, stand on two legs, the military and organized crime. That's how they stay in power and subdue the population. Um, the uh, corporations produce the, um, they produce the weapons, they produce the technology, they produce the, um, the, the mechanism for maintaining control over the public, over the citizens of the world. And that's why uh, in a book called Who Owns the World by Cahill, um, he uh, works in the House of Lords and sent me a, a copy of his book. It's fantastic. And he points out that 85% of the world, the people in the world, own nothing. And so when you realize that 25 sovereign uh, rulers own 12% of the land mass of the world and uh, a very small ruling elite uh, own a very large part of it, and most of them are billionaires who founded cell phone companies, um, and, the, uh, and the governments own a certain amount of the land mass. But uh, the, the ordinary people, 85% of the people around the world own nothing. So uh, that can't be because they don't want to own anything. They're the ones doing all the work and labor and producing food and items and everything for the corporations. So uh, actually, uh, Prince Charles had a meeting in the 90s in uh, South America. I think it was Brazil. And he invited 25 of the largest corporations in the world to his meeting. And it's when the World Social Forum was getting started and, and Agenda 21 for the UN, it's a big land grab, was being uh, developed. Uh, there was Prince Charles meeting with the heads of the 25 largest corporations in the world. That couldn't have been an accident. And... Um, they have to be part of the, the New World Order, too. So uh, what's happening is the corporations are taking over governments. That's what's wrong with our Congress. And uh, through bribes and lobby, lobbyists. And uh, we really are losing uh, our governments. They're being undermined and, and uh, just sort of dismantled right before our very eyes. And when the corporations and the financiers and the rulers take over, the monarchs, um, I call them gangsters and tiaras, but when they take over, uh, we're going to be reduced to um, just slavery. I mean, it's almost slavery now. Yeah, well, the... It uh, is slavery yeah, in a lot the, of forms now. There's, um, uh, in fact, a uh, uh, law now which has been um, in a and a Supreme Court ruling uh, which gives corporations the same 
attributes of a person as a natural people, such as you and I, that are protected by the First Amendment. So corporations are protected by the First Amendment now and can use uh, their considerable funds to affect legislation. Now, what have you found about... Not only that, when, not only that, when you put your name in all capital letters, you are you are a corporation. That's why they make you put your name in capital letters in legal documents. Go ahead. Yeah. Now, uh, for example, uh, this this leads to scientific scientific fraud uh, that's uh, engaged in by the scientific community working for corporations to achieve the ends of these false flag depopulation operations which have been uh, initiated by uh, the global monarchy under the British crown. Uh, what did you find, for example, about the fake 9.0 earthquake uh, that begins well, to tie all of this in to show how legislatures protect scientific inventions and weapons such as HARP, and then science fraud is committed in order to hide these false flag operations, such as in the Fukushima earthquake. Well, this is just a really great example, and I think it's hilarious, and it's why this is so much fun to do research, because you start figuring out things, and it's so empowering. I hope that this helps other people to do that. Um, I got an article by Takashi Hirose, which was published September 21st, 2011 in Counterpunch, and it's titled, Why Did They Fake the 9.0? what TEPCO and the media are hiding. And that's where I got the name of Shimamura Hideki, who was interviewed and quoted. He said, quote, this, he's a geologist and a seismologist. He said, quote, this never before heard of figure of magnitude 9 was produced by Japan's Meteorological Association's arbitrary altering of the magnitude scale. Well, what happened is, in the news, I heard all the American and European media sources right after the earthquake happened saying it was an 8.2, it was an 8.3, it was an 8.4. But Japan started with 9.1, and I said it's impossible to be have that much of a spread uh, with uh, seismological stations that have been collaborating all over the world for decades. And so... Um, Slowly, the Western sources kept increasing the magnitude until it was 9.0, and Japan lowered their estimate to 9.0. Well, what Takashi Hirose, who's a very good investigative journalist and has written 15 investigative books on the Japanese nuclear power industry, he said, by comparing that earthquake to many others, large magnitudes, he said it, it should have been an 8.3 or an 8.4 uh, based on the, the damage that he did. But he said the, um, the, the Japan Meteorological Association recalculated the data and used a completely different magnitude scale that nobody even knew about and, and reported as a 9.0. So it would be like if you and I were talking about measuring things in inches and they were measuring it in feet, but not reporting that, we would be assuming they were reporting inches, then uh, we, would, we would have numbers that just didn't make sense. They wouldn't agree with each other. So TEPCO actually co-opted the entire seismological community globally in a conspiracy to report that it was a magnitude 9.0 so that it was a once in a thousand year new earthquake, a magnitude 9. In fact, they've never had one in a thousand years in Japan or probably many other places. And um, 
and that meant that they would not be have been able to predict it and evacuate people. So they just raised to it to, to a 9.0 so they could escape any accountability or liability for not evacuating people or warning them. Right. And, and, so and what we that... know now is that Western science, and now Japanese as well, is willing to commit science fraud to pr protect corporations. And for the first and last and many more times, I'm going to say, we the people are on our own, Alfred. Right. So that uh, here we have an international war crimes racketeering organization that controls HARP and chemtrails in space, uh, creating the Fukushima event, an earthquake, and then we have, as part of their network on the ground, uh, Japanese scientists and organizations fraudulently raising it to 9.0 so as to escape any possible liability for the earthquake that their same international criminal organization created. Is that, is that what you're saying? That is what I'm saying, and you, you forgot to include elections I, and, yeah. and, and uh, politicians. So let's talk about Dennis Kucinich yeah. and what a colluder he is. Right, and... and uh, uh, we should, you know, people say, oh, poor Dennis, why are you picking on him? Now, I recall, uh, and I put in 10 years of hard work on this issue, so I, you know, I am, uh, I've got a dog in the fight, as they say. Uh, I recall that at one point, uh, around uh, 2002, 2003, you were instrumental in bringing the Space Preservation Act and Treaty and Dennis Kucinich to Berkeley, California, because you had uh, it in your position as Berkeley Environmental uh, Commissioner uh, mm -hmm. brought the City Council on to support the act. And I'd like to ask you, what did Dennis Kucinich tell you at that time that his positions were? Uh, regarding the whole aeronautics space issue? Well, he was talking to me. We were alone in a car or something. And he said, they have these weapons. They have developed these weapons. And they're going to use these weapons if we don't stop them with this bill. And he said, I'm on the Space and Aeronautics Committee in Congress. He, I'm on the Aviation Committee in Congress. Uh, he was on three committees that had to do with um, the atmosphere. And it seems very clear now that he was very aware of the weapons developed. He was very aware of the programs that were being carried out. And, of course, he was aware of classified information that they were uh, allowed to have on a need-to-know basis in their committees. So obviously Kucinich knew a lot more than he was telling me and he also knew that your bill was correct uh, because the bill you wrote for him because he sponsored it. But well, what he did was yeah. after he sponsored it he eviscerated it and neutered it and watered it down and um, sort of caused uh, a lot of criticism to be directed at you for putting chemtrails and mind control in that in that bill, but uh, you know you have to look at his later behavior. How he just turned over his constituency, like dumping a basket of apples in in uh, Senator Kerry's lap uh, when he withdrew from the presidential race and handed it his his efforts to Kerry. Uh, but then Kerry dumped uh, the whole. Uh, all the Democrats in it in, into uh, Bush's lap. So it just uh, seems like yeah, uh, this is a big game. Yeah, yeah. Kerry and Bush were fellow or our fellow uh, Skull and Bones people. They're Skull Bones and Bones. It's, yeah, it, yeah. So so now back to Kucinich. 
when Kucinich went to Berkeley, to the Berkeley City Council, uh, he had already neutered that bill and taken chemtrails and harp out of it. Now, yes. I've consulted with a lot of chemtrails experts who continually, during that period, tried to get appointments with Kucinich's office to meet with him to talk about chemtrails because that was his job. He was on those committees and they could never get appointments. So doesn't it seem to you that Kucinich was fronting for the weapons industry here? Uh, well, by, uh, yeah. I would say higher than that. He's a gatekeeper. And uh, from his uh, collaboration with Kerry, collusion with Kerry to... Um, to betray the Democrats in, in the year that, that Bush was elected, uh, I would say that he is uh, an agent for the New World Order. Uh, Kerry might be his handler, but basically he's working for the international financiers. Just as Stephen Chu, Secretary of Energy, Dr. Stephen Kooning, Under Secretary of Energy, and Obama himself, who got money for his election to run for president from the Crown. So, uh, you know, it's it, all roads lead to London. Every single harp antenna leads to Aberyst within Wales. It looks like a spider web that ends up, the body of the spider is in England. So, obviously, harp is for the international financiers, the city of London, and perhaps some of Wall Street. But I think... Um, the impact of radiation on the United States, on North America, on Japan, on the Western economy is going to be that it's completely destroyed. And the international financiers pump and dump is their whole game. That's how they make their profits. And they're dumping the Western economy and they're pumping China now. And the the larger Asian colony, uh, um, uh, the larger Asian economy. Okay, now let me. The, let the, me the big question. The big question. Yeah. The big question is the big mining project, which was uh, initiated or announced with the uh, the Harp earthquake demo uh, that destroyed Haiti. Who will be the using buying the uh, minerals that are mined in the Caribbean? Is it South America, or will it be for China as well? That's just a, a, a passing thought, but go ahead with your, your thoughts. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to read from you from a recent article entitled Kucinich Chemtrails and HR 2977 to show that uh, this issue is still being pushed by the intelligence agencies. Now, the person who wrote this uh, is, uh, uh, I would say, a, a friend of the weapons industry. And it starts out, one of the more pervasive myths regarding chemtrails is that uh, Dennis Kucinich tried to have them banned by an act of Congress, but was pressured by the government to remove the mention of chemtrails. So what happened? In a nutshell, Kucinich did not write the bill. Uh, and the focus of the bill has nothing to do with chemtrails. Uh, the bill listed, quote, a bunch of weird weapons, including mind control, tectonic weapons, and very briefly, chemtrails. And then it, it mentions the... Uh, the elements that I included in, in there having to do with what you have now demonstrated by the forensic evidence is was the purpose of the shuttle. The actual purpose of the shuttle and the reason what they built it was to be able to spray chemtrails in space. Namely, it banned the HR 2977, the Space Preservation Act that I wrote, banned electronic or psychotronic or information weapons, chemtrails, high-altitude, ultra-low-frequency weapons and systems, HARP, plasma, electromagnetic, sonic, and ultra-weapons, laser weapon systems, strategic, theater, tactical, or extraterrestrial weapons, and chemtrail, biological, environmental, climate, or tectonic weapons 
in space. And then this article. And that is the fight. That is the finest piece of legislation I've ever read, Alfred. It's excellent. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. And then it goes on. Who wrote this bill? The original language of the bill was actually created by Alfred Weber. And this is from Weber's website. And from, you know, it says Alfred Weber is the co-architect of the Space Preservation Treaty and the Space Preservation Act. Yes, I actually wrote it and I included all of this, which was the leading edge. This was back in 2001 before 9-11, which was actually the leading edge of the technology, which is they were using chemtrails and harp in space as a planet killer. And, and, uh, uh, this it's called it's called drag racing in the ionosphere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, this, it's drag uh, racing. Right, right. This this lang so so that this uh uh and then it says, Oh, Weber's one of the authors of the bill has now boo moved beyond this to time travel and r support a rather extreme claim that the CIA predicted presidential election uh by using time travel to identify George W. Bush, his father George H. Bush, uh, and Barack Obama, all of whom were pre-identified by DARPA time travel and briefed in a secret program. That's why we have warmongering uh, presidents like Barack Obama, George W. Bush, and George H. W. Bush, because the presidency has been co-opted uh, by the DARPA time travel program. Uh, and, and foreshadowing, foreshadowing yeah, yeah, yeah. is and, another name for that technology. Yeah. And then, and then he 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 goes on to say, to even bring in uh, the DARPA uh, time travel witness and whistleblower and my colleague Andrew D. Bashago. Andrew Bashago revealed that Project Pegasus was able to identify Jimmy Carter, who was then governor of Georgia, uh, because my 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 book, Exopolitics, have been taken to the past. Well, look, uh, it seems to me that this article, uh, which seems to be one of those uh, Intel PSYOPs articles, is really saying that Alfred Weber and his revelations and his forward thinking and drafting this bill and putting it to Kucinich before it was eviscerated, was actually introduced, is actually correct. Because we have now yes. evidence that they were spraying chemtrails in space. And that's why we had the whole decade from 2001, from 9-11, I put in the bill before 9-11, through the present day with this carnage, which has culminated in Fukushima. Secondly, we now have independent testimony from four independent whistleblowers that there was the secret time travel program and teleportation program. So it seems to me that through this article, which was actually written once you and I, Loren, started doing our programs on HARP, it was written at that time, uh, uh, and, ex and exposing HARP, that they're really saying that all of this is actually correct. What's your reaction to all of this? Right on. <laughs> <laughs> I think you and I were both correct. And, um, it, you know, truth is the daughter of time. We just had to wait. Right. And now we've waited long enough. Oh, okay. Now, let me bring back to... Uh, but that's, that's because if you do science-based investigation and you stick to science-based investigation, um, they're going to attack the person, you and me, but they can't attack the information. And they can't hide it forever either. And, and we've uncovered them. And a lot of people around the world will be very, very interested in this. Okay. Just, Especially Europeans. Yeah. Just as a finale to this 
per program. I'm going to read from two headlined articles on the Jeff Rents website by Lord okay. Kramer. One was dated January 10th, 2002, and the headline is Representative Kucinich HR 2977 names chemtrails as an exotic weapon. And that was the chemtrails in space. And that went exactly from my little old computer. I had a $300 computer. I bought it used up here in Vancouver. And I drafted the, the bill and the act and went straight into Kucinich's office and was introduced on October 2nd. So today is the anniversary. Today is the 10th anniversary of the introduction of H.R. 2977 into the Congress. October 2nd, 2001, Congressman Dennis Kucinich, Ohio, introduced H.R. 2977 during the first session of the 10th, 107th Congress of the United States. And and uh, uh, they they list the... Uh, the the uh, bill there and all of the sections and uh, uh, a, a number of organizations, including Chemtrail Tracking USA, Chemtrail Cent Central, place this on their website. Let me fast forward. And what happened from that moment was this, was that that bill was introduced and then it made the world headlines, not only uh, on rents, but throughout the entire uh, alternative media and the entire progressive community throughout the world. That chemtrails and harp were in there, and not wrongly, but rightly, because they were using the U.S. Space Shuttle Program as the delivery system for chemtrails in space. And then... There was and Kucinich knew it. Yeah, and and Kucinich, Kucinich as knew it. as as a member of the committees, the aerospace committees, whose job it was to to look into this, knew that, knew that, and so then there yeah. surfaced a mysterious comment article on the Federation of American Scientists website and newsletter that said, oh, look at this kooky bill, H.R. 2977, that talks about chemtrails and talks about frequency weapons and, uh, you know, talks about HARP, plasma electromagnetic and high altitude, low frequency weapons systems. Look at this. And it was without notice, without notice, that suddenly, H.R. 2977, after that article appeared in the Federation of American Scientists, without notice, Kucinich pulled the bill back. And without notice, to me, the principal drafter and architect uh, put in a bill Carol. which took that out totally. And I can remember a representative of Kucinich calling me up and telling me, who do you think you are? This is a quote. Who do you, when I objected to this, that representative of Kucinich said, who do you think you are? You're nobody. You're nothing. You can't object to this. This is the only way for this bill to go. Quote, end of quote. Now, because of that, and because of Kucinich's duplicity, we now have, the Fukushima false flag nuclear event that so far the estimates are by the end of this year 100,000 Americans are going to die. But we have the nuclear poisoning of the entire biosphere. What are your comments? Permanent. Because, permanent. What are your comments? Permanent. What are With your 1,300 comments to this? What are isotopes. your comments to this? And now, Representative Kucinich, when I was down in Port Townsend, Washington, I learned from a person who's active in the Democratic Party in Olympia, Washington, that they're creating a new uh, congressional district there. Kucinich has been uh, redistricted out of his district, and that Kucinich is trying to shoehorn himself in there 
although there are people that are saying he's a carpet bagger and want to keep him out. What do you have to say about this? I think that uh, Kucinich is an agent for the international financiers. Uh, he betrayed his own constituents um, in, in the Kerry Bush election. Uh, Kerry sold out too, uh, sold out the Democrats. And um, I don't think we have a two-party system. I don't even think we have elections. We have selections. And See? the selections are made before we even get to vote. And, and, and in I fact... Think you can tell where the shots hit by the way the feathers fly. And I think that your bill, uh, I think you were spot on with everything that you put in that. And there's been nothing but... Um, um, dissonance and chaos and, and flack in the air since that bill came out because you were right. And, 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 and in fact... to prove it yeah. science-based. Yeah. And in fact, the uh, foreign producer of Exopolitics Radio was appointed the campaign manager for the Southwest for the 2008 Kucinich campaign. And he told me that Kucinich's wife, who is British, came in and fired all of the long time, going back, you know, to the earlier campaign, all of the long time American volunteers in the campaign, and brought in people from Britain. And then, in the midst of all of this, had Kucinich speak to the British House of Commons. Is that not prima facie evidence of... Um, well, They're being British well, Crown agents? What we need to figure out now is why they're, they're chess moving him, just like they chess moved Stephen Chu to the, the uh, Lawrence Berkeley lab. Why are they moving Kucinich to Washington State to uh, actually Port Townsend, that area is near no, no, no. the they, biggest they, naval they, they, base is, on, the, yeah, this on the West Coast? In, in Olympia, Washington, the capital of Washington, is where the new district is. Oh, Olympia, Washington. Olympia. Olympia. What's Olympia the goddess of? Um, this is this is a New World Order move. He's working yeah. for the London financiers. Yeah, yeah. Good. They're moving him there. Well, look, I, yeah. I, I really want to express my personal thanks to you because in... Early 2001, I drafted this piece of legislation. It was sent to Kucinich. I drafted it because we knew here in Canada that chemtrails were being space, uh, uh, sprayed in space and that the harp was being used in space as a weapon, not of, only of mind control, but as a weapon causing earthquakes and steering hurricanes. Hurricane Katrina Famine. was steered into New Orleans. Land grabs. Yes. And we yeah. knew that. Land in... grabs, salmon. Yeah. Yeah. And we knew that in 2001. And, and because, you know, there are higher powers, that finally bill was introduced until the British Crown Network within the Zionist network, British Crown network within the U.S. government came up and pulled Kucinich's chain and said, get rid of that. And, oh, and, do you and mean, that was 10 years do you, ago. Do you mean the Zionist Anglo-American uh, permanent war crimes racketeering syndicate? Is that what you're referring to? Yes. And yes. And, and that is a syndicate that has operated HARP and that is now being, now has culminated in the Fukushima, Fukushima nuclear false flag that you've just documented is a horrific radiation event. I just want to thank you for uh, for bringing to public light the proof that 10 years ago the United States could have stopped 9-11, could have stopped a whole decade of Katrinas, of earthquakes that killed half a million people, 
and now of the final Fukushima event that is poisoning the entire biosphere and the entire human race and all living things. Thank you for bring, bringing that into life. We are now just, more I determined than ever to, uh, to pursue the yep. original objectives. Of, let, let me just make my little soapbox. We're now more determined than ever to pursue what we started in 2001. I turn the floor over to you. Thanks for the, uh, <laughs> for the platform. What, what I want to say to the collaborators and the cooperators and the uh, people who have uh, allowed this to happen by doing nothing is that when they bombed Iraq, with depleted uranium, when they bombed Yugoslavia with depleted uranium, when they bombed Afghanistan and Lebanon with depleted uranium and destroyed the genetic future of the people living in those regions, how in the world can people not think or understand from lessons in the past? The people who do that will do it to even their own families their own countries, their own neighbors. You can, it's, it's not even logical. It's insanity. And it's psychopaths who are in charge now. The Rothschilds have intermarried with their first cousins since the 1750s. How in the world could people be sane who married their first cousins for 300 years? It's impossible. Exactly. Well, we've, we've come to the end of this segment. We want to thank you very much. There's a new website out which has all of uh, the, the, the HARP uh, and chemtrails and nuclear uh, Fukushima uh, investigations that independent scientist Lorraine Murray has undertaken uh, over the past number of years, and that's www.ecologynews.com. That's ecologynews.com. Thank you, Loren. Uh, we've been with independent scientist Loren. Yeah. I just want to thank you for making me so naughty. <laughs> <laughs> thank well, you. Uh, okay, and and uh, by. By naughty, that I take it that you mean you're claiming your role as a whistleblower. Uh, so I'm a citizen scientist, right? Right, right. right. Yes. Uh, yes. So we've been with citizen scientist Loren Murray from Berkeley, California. Thank you.